the Packers come into their Week 15 matchup with the LA Rams rested off a of bye. But the Rams have extra rest too. This is a trend the Packers have faced this season. How much has it actually mattered? Maybe more than we realize. Plus, Trey Wingo, formerly of ESPN, joins us on the show today to talk about Aaron Rodgers, to talk about Matt LaFleur and Jordan Love and the Rams and all in and all kinds of fun stuff. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. I was <laughs> I was kind of laughing through that introduction because I got a note from someone who told me that they um, they do the the finger that people that if you can't see because you're listening on the podcast on YouTube. Whenever I say a newsletter, I would love for you to subscribe to. I put my my pointer finger in the air as if to say I have this great idea for you. And uh, he told me that he involuntarily does the same thing as he listens to the show, which uh, I think that's just great. And I think it's hilarious. Uh, today's episode of Locked on Packers is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe 24 7 monitoring agents. Capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. That's there's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. We're going to get to Trey Wingo, of course, in just a little bit, but I want to I want to dig into this first because it we, we talked about this a little. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about how momentous it may have been for the Packers to not take their bye after London and all of the tack-on effects and all that. And without getting into all of the, the science around it, sports science, about recovery, and the, the compounding effects of, of continuing to um, work when your body is not fully recovered. That's why we have things like WHOOP. That's why athletes use it. That's why the every NFL team has tracking data on these things. The Packers track recovery so that they know, okay, today has got to be a little bit lighter practice day because guys are not recovered. That's part of the, the science of sport now. Coming into the season... Sharp football. It's Warren Sharp and his group. They they were looking for betting angles, betting edges. And they found something that they called rest advantage. And it's exactly what it sounds like. A team comes into a game having had more rest than their opponent. And they found that particularly in games with underdogs, there was a meaningful performance difference of underdogs of four or more, which is to say, the, the playing field was actually narrowed when a rest advantage happened between two teams of disparate quality, right? So a really good team plays a not so good team. Well, if the really good team has less rest, it actually materially impacts the outcome of these games. And it is even more impactful late in the season. So right now, Last year, the first 17-game season, now incredibly small sample size, this is important, but from weeks 14 through 18, teams with a rest advantage went 21-11. and 11. That's 66%. That, it, that's without accounting for schedule or anything like that. Now, maybe that is just a fluke of the schedule. But coming into the year, guess which team had the biggest rest advantage disadvantage it was the Green Bay Packers and that's not even including the London game if we're talking about just the pure days the pure days the Packers had the biggest disadvantage and 
it all came right in a row. We talked about this a little bit, but let's just go through it again quickly. You play the Giants in London. You lose a game. You have no business losing. You're up two scores. You should win that game. If a million things go differently, one of a million things go differently, they win. Okay. They don't take the bye. They play the Jets. Okay. So that's a rest disadvantage because of the recovery that you're not getting from the travel, post game, all that stuff, readjustment to the time zones. Okay. Then... You go play the Commanders. They played the Thursday night before, so they get an extra three days rest. So you just played a team. You got your butt kicked. Maybe maybe it had something to do with the jet lag and, and the, the negative recovery effects on your body. Maybe it didn't. But now you got to go play another team that has a rest advantage over you. Okay? You lose that game after being up double digits in the first half. The Packers can't close out that game. They can't make tackles. They can't stop Brian Robinson in the run game. Okay. Maybe maybe there's something to that. The next week, they play the Bills who are coming off a bye. The, maybe the best team in football. They have to go play coming off a bye. We're now three weeks post London. And in three straight games, you're playing a team that has a rest advantage. They went 0-3 in those games. They played the Lions. Now, the Lions played the week before. Even if we don't think compounding is a thing, and and I do, and and the science says that it it is. But now you're playing the third game of a three-game road trip. They looked listless in that game. You finally get back home. You get to play the Dallas Cowboys, who are rolling. And they are coming off their bye. We're talking about five straight games where you're playing a team that has a rest advantage over you. And then the following week, you get this massive Cowboys win and now you got to play a short week against the Titans. That's brutal. That's brutal. Now you should have theoretically a rest advantage over the Eagles because you play on Thursday night. And I think that it's possible that that helped. They, They were in that game. And now, the reason I bring this back up is because now they're playing a Rams team. They were supposed to have this nice advantage, but the Rams played on Thursday. So they, rather than getting a seven-day rest advantage, you're only getting a four-day rest advantage because they're getting a couple extra days rest. They played at home on Thursday. So they've just been chilling in LA. Baker Mayfield, they get a huge Win. Now, it's, does he get save their season? No, their season's over. But the Packers have not been able to catch a break. Now, does this meaningfully impact anything? Maybe not. But I think you can make the case that over a five or six game stretch, when they lost of those six games, including the Giants game, three of them by one score, that there, there could be just that enough marginal difference that all of a sudden the difference in in Jair Alexander being able to run with Terry McLaurin on the outside is that little bit of rest disadvantage. If you make that play, the Packers have a chance to go win the game. They ended up having a chance to to win the game at the end anyway. Couldn't couldn't do it. So it's just been that kind of season for the Packers. It's just been that kind of season, unfortunately. And I didn't think the rest thing was going to be a big deal. And I don't think it was like the difference between this team being, let's say, you know, um, whatever, like 10 and 3 coming into this game and and where they are. But it it, I think, made some difference above what I thought it was going to make, which is to say that I thought it was going to have essentially no impact. But I, in real time, it, it felt like, oh my God, again? Again? Oh, the Bills off a bye? Oh, the Cowboys off a bye? Oh, Washington off a mini bye? Oh, a short week against... It was just like week after week after week. It felt like this was happening because it was. I don't, I don't know if it, if it affected the actual outcome of these games, but it is a fascinating thing to think about, and it is definitely something that I am going to pay attention to next year 
heading into the season. And it's something I'm going to watch closely over the next four weeks around the league to see if this trend from year one of the 17 game schedule holds up. All right, we're going to get to Trey Wingo here in just a second. Before we do, Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis. It's great. It has everything you could, you could possibly want to gamble on. That's the beauty of Bet Online. Anything you could want to gamble on, they have it for you to gamble on. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college football, basketball, World Cup. It's all there at Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to get all of your betting info. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, my show. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Back on the show, you remember him from NFL Live, from ESPN Radio. Now you can see him on YouTube. Half Forgotten History is the name of the show. A lot of really cool interviews that Trey Wingo does. Trey, it's great to be with you. Pete, always good to be with you, man. How are you? I'm I'm good. Snow is on the ground. Um, (laughs) Normally, this is the time of year where we're talking about the Packers playoff positioning and all that fun stuff. And unfortunately, we are not doing that. Yeah. Uh, this this time around, let's just I guess start there. How how surprised are you that this is where we are with the Packers right now? Well, that's a great question because I, I think that a lot of people and I, and I think the Packers organization felt like we have Aaron Rodgers, we'll be fine. Yeah, right? we'll. I mean, I think bo- it's interesting. Both the Chiefs and the Packers lost superstar wide receivers right. in the offseason. season, and I think both the Chiefs and Packers organization said our quarterback will be enough to carry our team forward. Um, And there's a whole new cast of characters in Kansas City, and there's a whole new cast of characters uh, in Green Bay. And I think it just took a lot longer for that whole new cast of characters in Green Bay to sort of get on the same page. And I think that's why we find out where the Packers are, where they are. I mean, Christian Watson at this point is, my God, killing it. You know, his numbers are up there with Randy Moss in terms of working production (laughs) over the things that he's doing. It's just taken a long time to get there. And obviously – I, I think the difference in the Chiefs and the Packers is that, you know, they were counting on a lot more rookie wide receivers. Right. In Green Bay, they brought in some veterans like, you know, uh, Juju uh, and a couple of other people and Marquez Valdez Scantling, the former Packer, that have sort of assimilated faster. And I think the biggest problem with Green Bay is that it just didn't come together fast enough in time for them to save the season. Yeah. And, and part of that is, is Randall Cobb gets hurt right away. He was a big part of the offense. Um, and they thought Sammy Watkins was going to do for them sort of what Juju Smith-Schuster was, just be a be a stabilizing force for the right. offense. He he did that for a game and then got hurt and has fallen totally out of this offense now. Um, and and that leads us to questions about Aaron Rodgers. And and we saw uh, just over the weekend, Jason Wilde had a conversation with Jordan Love where he said, "Oh, Jordan Love might doesn't might might not want to be here if if he has to sit behind Aaron Rodgers." another season this is going to be off season three now trey where we do the rogers will he won't he um as as we sit here now uh in in mid-december do you have a gut feeling on on what you think happens with with the quarterback position here well it's interesting uh you know mark slareth who's a good buddy of mine we worked together on nfl live for years and he's now calling game for fox yep. and we show every monday on spotify live together uh six o'clock eastern so we still work together he had a game with um with the Packers a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember which game it was, and he yes. was talking Aaron Rodgers, and you know he had Aaron Rodgers in the pre in the pre game you know interviews for the for the show, and he sort of shared with us some of the comments that Aaron said, and one of the things Aaron said was, yeah, I think I'm going to play next year, I just don't know where it's going to be, um, so that leads me to believe that he's open to uh, doing the Tom Brady route, and I just got to say, like, if if Aaron goes down that road, boy, you're, you're looking at a really different legacy for Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Hmm. You're not taking away all the things that he accomplished. That That's never going away. But let's just think about how, if Aaron Rodgers decides to either retire or go play somewhere else next year, think about how this ends. Um, you know, it, when, when they drafted Jordan Love in 2020, it clearly agitated him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it agitated him in a good way because he went on to win back-to-back NFL MVP. Yeah. Games, made it to the NFC Championship game. Pissed won. off Rodgers is the best Rodgers. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. And angry Aaron Rodgers is usually your best friend in Green Bay. 
But now, because of the back-to-back years uh, with the MVP and hit the flex that he had, and by the way, I'm for pay- players getting as much money as they can. Like I, I will never apologize or say a player should take less money. But he chose to swing that hammer. So in swinging that hammer, the Packers felt like, well, we're never going to be able to pay Devontae Adams, so we're going to have to get rid of Devontae Adams in order, work, in order for this contract to work. So Adams leaves. Aaron Rodgers gets his $50 million a year contract. And now, because of the way it's all unraveled, there's a possibility that Aaron Rodgers may be leaving. So Aaron Rodgers, because of what he was able to do, really forced the Packers' hand to get rid of Devontae Adams before they wanted to. And now Aaron Rodgers might be leaving. So if he does move on after this year, wait a minute, we gave you all the money, and now you're bailing, and because we gave you all the money, we don't have either Devontae Adams or Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay? I think Packer fans would not be real happy if that was the situation. I I think you're right about that. And I think there are a lot of Packer fans already who are like, you know what? You know, Aaron has done a lot of great things for the Packers organization. Won won us, the fans, a a Super Bowl. I'm ready to see Jordan Love. There are just some people who are going to feel that way or some people who think, I think rather uh, logically that Jordan Love plus stuff might be better than for the next three years than Aaron Rodgers and not Jordan Love and not that stuff. It's just all interesting. Do you, as, just as a fan of football, and, and you are more removed certainly than most of my listeners are from this, just as a football fan, do you want to see Aaron Rodgers play somewhere else if that's what he wants to do? Um, it would be weird. You know, I mean, I never thought I'd see Tom Brady as a Buccaneer or Joe True. And we might see him somewhere else next year. Yeah, exactly. Maybe in San Francisco, uh, where he had 83 friends and family into that game. <laughs> right. Why get destroyed by Mr. Irrelevant, <laughs> Brock Purdy. Uh, score one for Mr. Irrelevant over yes. the goat. Never thought I'd, I'd say that in my life. Um, nothing would surprise me, right? Not, the way things go this day, these days in the NFL, nothing would surprise me. Uh, I could see Aaron Rodgers playing somewhere else. But let's be honest, like we're talking about these weapons. All Aaron hasn't played great. He hasn't played great. No, nope. you know he hasn't been the same Aaron Rodgers. Some of that is obviously the thumb. Uh, some of that is now going to be the rib injuries that he's dealing with. And quite frankly, if I'm the Packers, and you know, you, if you think you're pretty much out of it, I think you have to play Jordan Love at some point down the stretch of the season just to make sure you're good, right? I mean, I, I thought I saw a quote recently from from Goon Koontz where he, he said, "We've seen all we need to see." Maybe, and that's great, but it's certainly not a ton of game action, right? Don't you want to see a little more game action? When he came in in relief of Aaron Rodgers in that last game, I thought he looked really good. I'd like to see more of that going forward if I'm a Packer fan to feel good about. Listen, there's been the two greatest transitions in the history of quarterbacks in the NFL in the Super Bowl era that I can think of, Montana to Young and Favre to Rodgers. If you can do that again, Rodgers to Love, the Packers are ahead of the game, man. I want to make sure that we have that before we make any decisions or Aaron Rodgers makes any decisions about what happens next. Yeah, and it that your your citation of those two makes me just a little sad that Andrew Luck, you know, just lo- yeah. fell out of love with the game and his body body broke down at the point because it could we could have had Manning to Luck and we could have been talking about that right. in that same breath and it just Absolutely. it sucks that, that that's not part of of the legacy of the NFL. Um, for for in a situation like this, what do you think makes the most sense? You said you you think the Packers have to see Jordan Love, but if the Packers are mathematically in the mix. Yeah. Brian Gutekinds just said, look, we want to instill a winning culture here. We owe it to the guys in the locker room to keep fighting. I get all of that. I think this is much harder internally than it is for us sitting here and just saying, hey, you know what? You know what they should do. Yeah. Um, but what Trey, what do you what do you think they should do? <laughs> well, again, if, if there's you know, it's the old uh, dumb and dumber line. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. Right? As long as there's a slimmer of hope, a sliver of hope, a glimmer of hope. I combine those two Let's words. Let's do it. A slimmer. Just because, I like it. You know, we want to we want to lock it down on the Locked On uh, Packers podcast. Um, I, I I think that as long as there's an opportunity, you keep trotting Rodgers out there. But at some point, is it diminishing returns? Like Baker Mayfield played all of last year with a torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder for Cleveland. He was terrible. Like mm-hmm. they kept saying, well, he's better than everything else. At this point, is a diminished Aaron Rodgers before the injuries with a thumb that's not going to be better before the season is over, is he a better option to keep you in these things uh, than Jordan Love is at this point? I think that's the really interesting question uh, that the Packers have to ask themselves. There have been times during the season, like after the Lions game, when Rodgers just looked absolutely yeah. brutally awful. Yeah. And you're just like, there are the, there's going to be the Rodgers defenders who say, well, but he's hurt. 
Yeah. And my my point to them was always, well, if he's that hurt, yeah. th- then you got to play Jordan Love. Like he can't Correct. be out there. Correct. And so you have to, there is this fine line. I don't I don't know that at this point now, he says this th- thumb is a non-issue, maybe the extra weeks with the ribs, he's okay now. But that would be a convenient excuse, right? If they really want to see Jordan Love. Correct. They have their out. I mean, they have their out if they want to use it. Whether or not they want to use it is is an interesting question here. Um, what do you what do you think would make sense for Rodgers? Like, let's say he says he goes to the Packers and says, "Look, I think it makes the most sense for me to be out of here." Yeah. I'm looking around the league and I go, "Are there that many places?" Like, I think there are teams that would want him, but are there places that would make sense for Aaron Rodgers? That's the much tougher, I, I think, question to answer here. I have one in mind. I wonder if it if it is one that you'll name. Uh, yeah, well, let, let's let's take the Tom Brady route. If you're doing this, you're not doing it just to play. You're not no. doing the George Blanda Warren Moon thing. I just want mm-hmm. to keep playing or be on a football team. You want to go somewhere where you can achieve success. And you know, when you look at well, why did Brady pick the Bucks? Well, you take away Jameis Winston's 30 interceptions or 30 plus interceptions that year, and they were a really good team with a lot of weapons. So where is a possibility or an opportunity? for Aaron Rodgers to go where those weapons might fit in. And it might be the team that we just saw Tom Brady uh, play this past season, San Francisco, Mm -hmm. close to home, just like Tom Brady for Aaron Rodgers. But then the question becomes, which is really interesting for the 49ers, if if they can get both. Right. Yeah. How about this, though? But this is a really sort of organizational question for San Francisco. If, in fact, it's true that whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo or Brock Purdy or Trey Lance at some point, that you can plug almost any quarterback into that system and make the system work. I mean, my God, they did beat the Packers throwing it eight times in an NFC championship game with Jimmy Garoppolo. Why did you trade three first round picks for Trey Lance? Yeah. Right. I mean, that that's, then it becomes really interesting with the San Francisco philosophy and how they're building a team, but that's the first one that comes to mind for me. I'm assuming that wasn't the one you were thinking of. No, I was thinking of the New York Jets because yeah. Yeah. Th- to me, when you look at Garrett Wilson, his ascension, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis was a guy that the Packers had a lot of interest in around the draft. They actually tried to trade for him and the Jets said, thanks, but no thanks. Insane. And the, the defense is so good. And we know Aaron Rodgers respects the hell out of Robert Sala. And so yeah. if, if, if you think there can be a mutual breakup. We don't have to go fully into a Seinfeld bit here, but yeah. if you think there can be a mutual breakup and the Packers say, okay, we think it's time. And Rogers says, okay, we think it's time. Then the Mike LaFleur connection might work out. And you say, okay, with your, with your blessing here, here's the jets. The jets give up some stuff. I think that could make sense for both sides. We're not there yet. No, the, pa- the Packers have a game to play um, this week. I want to ask you about the Rams from this perspective. Um, the, the Stafford trade has been the topic of, of much discussion this year because Jared Goff has looked really good in Detroit. And Matthew Stafford is now hurt and was bad when he played. Yep. I think the Rams trade desolation for the next couple of years for the Super Bowl. But how how has this year and and their uh, outlook moving forward changed the way that you view that Stafford all-in trade and all the all-in moves that got the Rams to where they got? Yeah, there's a lot to process there. First, I agree with you on the Jets. I think it's perfect. Mm. By the way, just so people understand how good the Jets' defense is, they've gone eight straight games without giving up a 300-yard passer, a 100-yard receiving game, or a 100-yard rusher. Wow. Eight straight games. They haven't given up I did not know that. That's how good that defense is. And, you know, the Jets, it's sticky because, well, if you do that, are we kissing off Zach Wilson the same way we kissed off Sam Darnold? I mean, Sam Darnold was the third pick in 2018, and Zach Wilson was the second pick in 2021. Are we doing that again? Uh, and then if that if Rodgers goes there, then it's sort of the Jordan Love scenario all over again, right? You took this quarterback high, but we're bringing in this other guy because we think he can still – he can do it better, and we don't know what we're going to do with that pick. And then there's the obvious Favre to the Jets thing. That it would be – it would just be – that we It don't would be chef's kiss. Do, although the drama, yes, w- would be fantastic. Uh, the other part of the question was about Rams uh, and their situation. Look. The Rams went to two Super Bowls over a four-year span and won one of them. I think almost any franchise would sign that deal with the devil. But you're right. It's almost like the Florida Marlins lather, rinse, repeat scenario. You know, they won two World Series by going all in and then decimated the team, and they've never been anything since. Um, So I I don't think that the Rams are going to fall that far. But the the Rams, and I'll tell you, I've heard – and again, I can't I can't authenticate this, but I've heard whispers about Matthew. Okay, I've got my ring, and my, maybe I'm good with the injuries that that I've had and the and the concussion. Um, you know, it, it it was a weird year last year. I mean, like 
the Rams were sort of floundering with a three-game losing streak after they lost Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, after they lost Robert Woods, rather, and Odell right. Beckham Jr. came in. It took them a few games to catch up. Like, no one ever thought down the stretch of the season last year that the Rams were going to be the team to beat in the NFC. They just found a way to get it done. And, you know, if Jaquiski Tart doesn't drop a arm punt from Stafford in the NFC Championship game when the Niners are up 10, they probably don't get to that game, and the Bengals are probably Super Bowl champs right now. So, or if the, if the Packers don't have a complete and utter meltdown on special yeah. teams in the divisional right. round, they were right. a great matchup for the Rams. They beat the crap out of the Rams in late November that year with Odell Beckham. So I agree. It, it, it took a lot to get them to that Super Bowl. Yeah, I, there was a lot of good fortune, for lack of a better term, despite all the, the praise of Sean McVay and, and GM Les Snead and the things they've done consistently. I mean, eventually it's coming home to roost. And, and you know, they have the contract. Now, and I don't know what's going on with Aaron Donald now at this point because, you know, he was almost going to retire after right. last year. I have a feeling if if Stafford and Donald decide to part ways, I don't think Sean McVay is going to be there either. I was just so going to ask you about Sean McVay. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, – you know, he loves football, but he doesn't love losing football, right? I mean, it's one thing to love football when you're winning all the time. It's another thing to really love the game when it's not as easy as it has been, and you got to go through this stuff. So, well, and apparently he works like a maniac. He he may just be burned out, and maybe yeah. needs a couple of years off, come back. Like we've seen coaches do this before. You go do broadcasting for a couple of years. Now the coaches that do that tend not to come back because that's such a good gig relative to the work that they had to do as coaches. You know what I mean? But, but Sean's in in a such, such a younger position than a lot of those guys. That's true. Uh, And I, I like, you know, like Dick Vermeil is the ultimate example. I mean, you know, he, Mm -hmm. he, he coined the phrase burnout with the Eagles went away for, you know, a decade and a half. And then uh, came back to not only win a Super Bowl with the Rams, but build a really good team in Kansas city before he decided to retire. There's a lot of interesting things that are going on with the Rams. And I, you know, I think the Rams and the and the Ravens and the Packers, for obvious reasons, are probably the three teams that I'm most curious in in the offseason because all of these teams have been constructed around a certain thing, and all of those things may be moving on. So I think those are the three teams that I find most fascinating coming up in the offseason. I, I totally agree. There is a sort of niche group of Packer fans on Twitter that are like, come bring us Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see that, but it's just an interesting thing. La- last thing here for you, Trey. Uh, I've, I've been asking a lot of the guests that we've had on this season because I have had to reckon with this myself over the course of the year. How has your perception of, of Matt LaFleur changed this year based on what you've seen with this Packers team? Because it, it has changed a little bit for me. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, when you have Pete Aaron Rodgers, it's easy to be a really good head coach. Yeah. Right? Like, we talked about all those hires and like, oh, Matt LaFleur's clearly the best. Well, yeah, because he had Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it helps. I'm not saying he's a bad coach, but look, a, a really good uh, – Merrill Hodge, good friend of mine, we worked together for a long time. He said, being a coach is really weird because you have all the power but no control. Like You can you can put everything together. <laughs> That's you, right. Yeah. You can get all the players. You can do all the, But then they have to go do it. And if they don't do it, then you look like an idiot, Right. So I, I think that LaFleur has been blessed uh, for these few first few years because it's Aaron Rodgers at his peak. And now we have Aaron Rodgers not at his peak with real questions about the staff. Uh, I, I just think it's a it's a it's a normaling or a flattening of the curve. That, you know, I mean everything comes back to, water finds its level, right? Everything sure. comes back to norm. Matt LaFleur looks like a genius coach because Aaron Rodgers is playing out of his mind, two time MVP. And Rodgers deserves credit for that too, right? I mean, that's that's part of the deal. Part of the deal, no question. Uh, and then when and when suddenly the players aren't as good, it's like Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season, right? Right. And he might not again this year. Like he's, they've turned it around. They've won yeah, three of the last four games. <laughs> yeah. It might work out, but you know, it's amazing how many times you cannot have a losing season when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, that's right. So I, I don't think Matt Lafleur is a bad coach in any way, shape, or form, but I think the boy genius le- label, it's easy to put on when you have Aaron Rodgers doing those Aaron Rodgers things. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And I think, you know, one of the criticisms I have leveled on him this year is the offense is looking a little bit more Mike McCarthy-ish, which to yeah. me means more control for Aaron Rodgers. And I've been saying, look, if, if you want him to play like 2020 Aaron Rodgers, the offense has to look a little bit more like it did in 2020, which means a little more Matt LaFleur, a little right. less Aaron Rodgers. And that's ultimately on the coach to be in charge of those kinds of things. I don't know if that's happening in Green Bay right now. So we'll see moving forward. Trey, this was awesome. I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully do it again soon. Pete, anytime you need, buddy. Always good to talk to you. All right. Thanks to Trey for joining the show. Always great to talk to him. Hopefully we get to do that again 
soon. His old producer at ESPN Radio is my producer on Locked On Sports today. Um, she's great. Shout out, Allie. What's up? Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made so, so easy. You don't have to worry about playing against someone who, who's doing this for a job. And there are people out there who do this for a job. It's just you and the number. It's just you and the number. Prize Picks, they set a number. And you decide if you think a player is going to produce more or less than that number. You put a couple players together, bang, you've got yourself a lineup and you can win up to 10 times your money. It is that easy. And they do it in all sports. You don't want to do football. You don't want to do the Packers. Okay, there's basketball. There's baseball when that comes back. There's golf. There's World Cup. There's there's anything you can think of, you can make a prize picks lineup for it. Truly, anything you can think of, basically, if it's a sport, they will, they will let you put together a prize picks lineup for it. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. Use the promo code locked on and you will get a 100% deposit bonus on that first deposit up to $100. Prize Picks is it's so easy. And they're going to give you money to do it. Why would you not want that? Why would you not want that? Come on. Prizepicks.com or in the app and use the promo code locked on. And again, thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On Sports today. My all sports show I hosted with our friends from around the Locked On Podcast Network, bringing you the insights that only our network can give you. The biggest stories in sports beyond the scoreboard. It's all there for you at Locked On Sports today. All right, back tomorrow with our pal Lily Zhao for Zhao You Doing. We will have our crossover Thursday with Travis Rogers from Locked On Rams coming up. And then uh, a Friday show, TBD. I think we're going to do another interview. I don't I don't know that, that it serves um, the purposes of this show and this season right now to do a live show on Friday. So far, the, the overwhelming response that I've gotten is that people like the interviews and they like, the, they like to have the show in the morning. They like to have the show there for them Friday morning. So we're going to do that. Um, for a little while at least, and then we'll we'll reconsider next year when when there's um, other stuff to to do live. We're gonna you still be live um, if there's big free agent signing stuff in March. We'll go live if there's you know for every night on the draft. We're still gonna go live, so there's still gonna be plenty of opportunities. Plus, after the game on Monday, we will be live. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers. If you're listening to this on like 1.2 or 1.5 speed, that that last little bit is going to be hella fast. <laughs> and anytime you want to come hang out with us live, at the very least after games, you can do that on the Locked On Packers YouTube page to stay Locked On Packers.